Hello everyone, welcome to automation community. In this session, we are going to see about PLC, Programmable Logic Controller. Before going to the topic, please like and subscribe our channel. So let's split this PLC into three words, Programmable Logic Controller. So let's see one by one. What is controller? We have seen in the previous session about the control system, right? So it is a device, a controller is a device used to get a desired output. And what is logic? A logic is a way of writing a program. So the way how I want a output that is called as logic and programmable. Programmable means you can change or you can write the program at any time. In between if you want to stop the controller and you want to change the program means you can. So that is programmable logic controller. So this PLC is playing a vital role in control system and industrial automation. So let's see exactly what is PLC. So it's a dedicated industrial computer. So in an industrial term, PLC is also called as dedicated industrial computer. So it's a computer type device used to control equipment in the industrial facility and you can find PLC in utility plants, batch control applications, chemical processing, conveyor system, food processing machinery, auto assembly lines etc. So these are all the examples in industrial automation. We have seen traffic light controller example in the previous session right. So we can write the same logic in PLC also. So we have a very small types of PLC which we are going to see in the later slides. So you can use those small PLC for the traffic light control also. So PLC is not only for the industrial automation, it's also for you know building automation you can utilize, you can use it for transport automation also. So why we are using PLC? So it is offering more advantages over the traditional control system, especially relay control system. So the high, you know, it is having high reliability comparing to the previous control systems. And the space requirement is very small and uh, it is uh, reduced because when it compared to the relay control system, because while it comes to the troubleshooting of relay system, it's really very tough, but in PLC, you can able to, you know, troubleshoot within 10 minutes. And you can, and it can able to withstand harsh environment. As I have already mentioned, it is a dedicated industrial computer. So you can use it in the harsh environment also where a PLC can withstand high temperature and, you know, the humidity also. And expandability. So the number of IOs is huge. According to the application, you can increase or decrease the IOs of PLC. So these are the advantages we can find it in the PLC. And let's move on to the types of PLC. So before entering into the types, we have three major types. One is based on size. And the third one, second one is based on hardware setup. And the third one is based on power supply. So let's start with based on size. So Based on size, we have five types, nano type PLC, micro type PLC, medium type PLC, large type and very large type. If you see the difference between all these five or mainly depends upon number of IOs. Nano PLC will have very less IOs with, you know, below 10 and if you see very large PLC are having 10,000 or 20,000 IOs also we can add. So that's what the advantages of PLC we have seen as expandability. Right. So it's mainly depends upon the number of size and few classification depends upon the communication and the memories. So according to that, we are classifying the types of PLC based on sizes. And we have a second type which is based on the hardware setup. So we have a compact type PLC and a modular type PLC. The compact type PLC is like an integrated type PLC. As you can see in the slide. A simple box is there and in, inside that box we have a processor and over there we have a, a you know IO pins you can see the IO ports here 
So you can see the IO ports here. And also we have a output ports. So we have a communication uh, ports here. Inside this processor, we have a memories. And uh, you know, everything is integrated. So that's what it is called as compact type PLC. Okay. In straight to that, you have a modular type PLC where a CPU is a different module, uh, IO modules are a different module, and a power supply module is a different module. So, in contrast to the compact type system, we have a modular type PLC. So, all are plug in, plug in type. So, there will be a rack or back plane will be there. You need to plug in your CPU first and after that you can uh, add the power supply module and communication module and IO module like that you can plug in and plug out what and all you want and what and all you don't want. So that is a modular type PLC. And the third one we have is depends upon the power supply. So we have with SMPS and without SMPS PLC. So that is nothing but the source voltage we are giving to the PLC. If you are giving 230 volt to, as a source to the PLC, which is called as with SMPS PLC, and if you are giving 24 volt, uh, you know, uh, to the PLC source, it is called as without SMPS PLC. So these are all the three main classification of PLC. One is depends on size, hardware setup, and based on power supply. If you are going to purchase a PLC for your project, you have to classify. First, how many IOs you may require and uh, what type of hardware setup you want and uh, what may be the power supply you are uh, you know, going to give for the PLC. So, depends upon these things, you can purchase your PLC. So, let's see about the components in the PLC system. So, let's see this picture first. So, we have an input module here where you are having all the field instruments, the so switches, transmitters, transducers, sensors. So, these are all the input devices. So, these devices should communicate with the CPU, right? So, for that, IO module is act as a communication bridge. And we are also having output devices like motors, solenoids, you know, contractors, VFD. So, these are all the output devices and these has to communicate with the CPU using the output module. And we have a power supply common for all these. IO modules also require power supply and CPU will also require power supply. And we have a programming device over here. The use of programming device is nothing but to write a program. So, as I have already told, PLC is also having a software. Right, so these are the hardware setup, and this programming device is a software setup. Uh, you know, the program have to be the software has to be installed, and we have to write the program, and we have to download that to the CPU to run the application. So we have a PLC processor, IO module, thesis or backplane. Thesis or backplane is nothing but this rack. The backplane I have explained, you know, where we will be plug in and plug out. So that is a backplane. And we have a power supply and we have a programming software that runs in the PC. So PC nowadays it is used as a programming device, but in the olden days we were using uh, uh, the handheld devices also. So the device will be very handy and uh, you can write a small program in, the, in that. So handheld device where used and the purpose of central processing unit it's a part of the programmable controller that retrieves decodes stores and process information it also executes the control program stored in the plc memory it functions in the same way as cpu of our normal computer the io module as i have already told it acts like a bridge between the cpu and field instruments. So, this IO system consists of two main parts. One is rack and the IO modules. Rack as I, we have already discussed, a rack will be like this. It will be like a long, uh, you know, horizontal kind of uh, plane where you will be plugging all your devices. You know, modular 
components of PLC like uh, power system, CPU, analog input module, analog output module, digital input module, digital output module, everything is connected with this rack type. That's what it is called as the rack and IO modules. So the rack has to be at the back, act as a backplane and the IO modules will be fit into that. So the rack is an enclosure with the slots. So the plugin is using the slots only. So and that is connected to the CPU. IO modules are devices with the connection terminals to which the field devices are wired. So modules as I have already told this is a separate module. Whereas in uh, you know integrated system, IO module is will is complete this slot. This complete line will be the input module and this complete line will be the output module. But here in modular type of PLC, we have a separate separate module. That's the difference between those two. So IO system is what actually physically carries out that control commands from the program and stored in the PLC memory. So the uh, what how once the program is uh, downloaded to the CPU, the program the CPU will read the information from input and it will uh, you know uh, run the program and it will fetch the output. So like that only it works. And uh, this one also we have seen and it's a modular. PLC and rack based system you can see the rack is behind the plane and everything is connected to that and we have more vendors for PLC in that uh, the uh, you know more familiar uh, vendors are Modicon, AB, ABV, Omron, Siemens, Delta so these are all the popular vendors for PLC and so more are there like Honeywell there are so many PLC vendors are there and uh, for each uh, PLC, they will have their own uh, software for that. For example, if you take Siemens PLC, we have a Smatic Manager. That is a software for the Siemens PLC. And you cannot, uh, you know, use any other PLC for the Smatic Manager. So, AB should use only RS Logic. And ABB will be using the Codices. And Codices is a common language for, uh, you know, some other PLC also. So, like that you have global software also and dedicated software vendor based software also it is there so that's it about the plc so i hope you have uh, understood the basic concepts and uh, the components and the purpose of plc in the industry if you like this video kindly like and subscribe our channel i'll meet you in the next session thank you